Prey. Joanna Shields has led the way in making new media content pay. In 2005, she was MD of Strategic Partnerships at Google. A groundbreaking alliance with B-Sky B was just, well, it was just one of the deals that she orchestrated. She left at the start of 2007 to become president at Bebo. She doubled its user base and blazed a trail in internet drama with BAFTA-nominated series Kate Modern. She was also the architect of Bebo's $850 million sale to AOL in 2008. She headed AOL's People Networks until mid-09, then launched the online unit of Shine Group, the TV production company founded by Rupert Murdoch's daughter Elizabeth. Just months later, she took up a fresh challenge at Facebook. It falls to her to convert its half a billion subscribers into billions of dollars. And I'm delighted to say Joanna Shields joins me now. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Um, list Thank of achievements there, roles that you've uh, held at various companies. But I want to start by asking you about these awards. Uh, and, and a former government minister, Lord Miners, he's going to be talking about yes. some of the barriers holding back women's progress in business. Is there something to be said about that? Well, I, I mean, I've been in the industry. I went to Silicon Valley in 1987. So I've seen many stages of, of the, uh, the technology industry and the position of women in that industry. Um, I have to say the early days it was really difficult. Mm. You know, oftentimes you would be literally the only woman in a boardroom. Um, but it's changed a lot. In fact, technology is one of the most open areas for women. And, you know, the, it's really gratifying to see so many, you know, young women starting their careers in engineering. That, and that's what I was going to ask you, actually. Is it technology? easier in the tech industry than, say, I don't know, maybe banking? I mean, you I don't, don't know you're not a banker, but, yeah. you know, nevertheless. It, it's, it's, I think it's been, it's, it's definitely open, you know, when you think about the internet, everyone can create a company on the internet, everyone can, you know, work in, in the industry. So I think it's, um, it's something we, especially young people now are growing up web savvy mm. and experienced and it would be fantastic to see more people enter and learn to code and actually start their own companies in technology. And just looking into your own background, we were just saying there that at AOL you were really responsible for extending the company's global reach at Facebook. You're, you're responsible for yeah. kind of pretty much the same thing, sales and business developments in Europe, the Middle East uh, and Africa. So right. this is similar territory, right? This is, uh, yeah. this is geography that you're familiar with. Well, my career has been really taking um, you know, technology companies and helping them grow internationally. That's been what I've been doing for the past 25 years. I've started my own company. I've sold a couple of companies. I've been through a number of IPOs. Um, but in general, you know, American companies need the expertise um, of expats in various countries to help sub start their businesses and grow mm -hmm. the revenue streams. You were also president of Bebo, and mm -hmm. while there, you were quoted as saying the spectrum of social networking is evolving beyond utilities and applications. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, um, when I was at Google, we started to see the trend of social networks. We, there was, we had our own product called Orkut, mm -hmm. um, which was very big in India and Brazil, and we also, um, at that point, had just acquired YouTube. So it became you know, very clear that people not only wanted to find information on the internet or search for something, but they wanted to share. So that was the next wave. So the opportunity came up for me to become CEO of Bebo, and I, I took it. I was very excited about bringing that, um, that notion of social and that social web to, to the world. And what we did is we actually connected people with media and allowed them to interact with it and share it on the web. So it was a social media network, so a little bit different from, from Facebook, in that Facebook is a, you know, a platform for communicating and sharing your lives with friends. And we must, I guess we now have a generation that has never known a reality mm -hmm. that didn't involve internet, mobile devices, social networking. What does their familiarity with technology, their reliance on mobile communications, what does that mean for long-term economic growth in the way we work, in the way we consume? I think I have an 11-year-old son, and he consumes content. He plays World of Warcraft. He watches television. He's listening to clips on YouTube. He's speaking with his friends on his iPhone. I mean, literally, the multiple inputs that they can process and manage simultaneously is really changing how we as society interact and communicate with each other. I see it most in the young people, but I also see it in, in my own life. You know, there's when you're watching a television show now, you often have your iPhone or your your computer open. You might be, you know, watching the X Factor and communicating with your friends about what's happening. So there's that, you know, dual screen experience yeah. that is is really changing how um, we interact it's with each other. Completely connected all the time. Absolutely. Joanna Shields, thanks so much. Joanna Pleasure. Shields, VP, Facebook. Great thanks to talk much. to you. Come in again.